birthdays or anniversaries today or in the past week? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Amen. Amen. Anybody here got any birthdays or anniversaries? <laughs> Amen. Somebody else had a birthday. Who was it, Leon? We didn't get the same two. Who was it? Yeah, and where is he? Day two, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. Brother Carlos, come on and lead us in a song, amen. Y'all would, uh, we're remembering Veterans Day today. Uh, turn to 242, please. America the Beautiful. Our veterans. You want to recognize our veterans before we sing, brother? Yes, let's have all the veterans stand. You served in the armed forces, amen. 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 Have me up here. I start to say darling. <laughs> My wife served in the Salvation Army for a little while. <laughs> no, yeah, we still we still I want them to stand up and tell what branch you served in. Navy. Served in the Navy. Amen. US Army retired. Amen. US Navy. US Army military. Amen. <laughs> United States Navy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Amen. 242, if you would please stand and turn to 242, America the Beautiful. First, second, and the last. 242. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of
uh, when they were shooting it from the, the British were shooting it from the ships, the, the battle that inspired our, our national anthem, uh, one of the captains said he couldn't believe this flag was still standing because he, he knew he made several direct hits on the flag. And uh, what they found out is that uh, like in the morning what they saw is every time the flag would start to falter and fall, someone else would grab it and there were bodies of our patriots around the center of the flag, holding around the, you know, around the flagpole holding it up in that battle. Yes, amen. Yes, glory to God. Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today, and we appreciate, it, appreciate each and every one that's come this way to worship the Lord Jesus in truth and in spirit, and thank God for him. Amen? Amen. I do thank God for our men uh, that are serving our nation today and willing to lay their life down that we may enjoy the freedom that we have today, and uh, I don't take it lightly. I thank God for our great nation. Uh, in spite of all of her faults, we still live in the greatest land on planet Earth. And I'm proud to be an American today. And I thank God for our great country. Amen. I really believe that we need to really be praying. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our leaders. And we need to pray about the upcoming presidential election next year. God, uh, God knows every, every need. And God is able to raise up a man. God's able to put him in the position there. God, the Bible says God raises up kings and God sets them down. God puts men in those places of authority. And I still believe if God's people will pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek the face of God, I believe there's hope for America, don't you? I, I really do. I believe that with all my heart. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on the service today, be upon our country, be upon our men uh, uh, that are serving our land today. And Brother Tony Black, will you lead us to the Lord?
preacher out in his prime like that but he did but brother Dean right in his suffering he wrote this song Amen. praise God and what a blessing it's been to people down through these, these years and uh, thank God for that praise God I tell you what we take things for granted many days Amen. one of these days we're going to be home with the Lord Amen. we're going to look back on our, all our trials and all our troubles all your afflictions and things you thought well, how in the world will I make it and you know what the Apostle Paul said? He said, we're going to count it all as a light affliction. One of these days, it's going to all be history. And we're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll look back and say, it's been worth every mile. It's been worth every trial, every heartache, every pain. Praise God, you listen to the choir as they sing that last verse. Amen.
I got a message for all the veterans who are here today. It is the veteran, not the preacher, who has given freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the veteran, not the poet, who has given, given us freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to assemble. It is, not the veteran, it, it is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It a veteran, it's the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag. Eternal rest, grant them, O Lord, and perpetual light shine upon them. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd worked for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my spouse. I'd thank my God above to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Houston down to Detroit, from New York to LA, yes, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, That I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA Proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the men who died Who gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless I wanted to do something this morning to uh, say thanks to the veterans, but anytime I do anything in the house of God, I want it to be in honor of God, and I think back in my life at the veterans I've known, just a lot of y'all knew my stepdad, and 
He was in Vietnam in a helicopter crash and lived through the helicopter crash and had a bad back from 1969 until the Lord decided to take him home July the 4th, 1998. Christmas was Daddy's favorite holiday because it was Jesus' birthday. His second, ho- his second favorite holiday was July the 4th because it was Independence Day and he had been in Vietnam. And at 420, July the 4th, 1998, the Lord took him home. That was amazing. A lot of people said, how do you stand July the 4th? At 420, July the 4th, 1998, preacher, Pop went home with Jesus. He's in a better place today than we are. So I wanted to do this song this morning for all the veterans, but I wanted to do it to honor God. And there's so many veterans that I know that puts God first. My father-in-law, he's a veteran. He's a Navy corpsman. And every time we sat down at their table, we asked a blessing. And that means a lot to me. There's so many homes that don't ask blessings no more, and they wonder why they're in trouble. They need to look in the right direction instead of the wrong direction. Y'all pray for me. Dreamed I went to heaven And you were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing And someone called your name We turned and saw a young man And he was smiling as he came He said, friend, you may not know me now Then he said, but wait You used to teach my Sunday school When I was only eight Every week you would say a prayer Before the class would start One day when you said that prayer I asked Jesus in my heart Thank you for giving to the Lord I am alive that was changed Thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave Then another man stood before you and said, remember the time a missionary came to church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave, and that's why I'm in heaven today. For giving to the Lord I am alive That was changed Thank you For giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave One by one they came As far as the eye could see Each life somehow touched By your generosity Little things that you had done Sacrifices you made Unnoticed on the earth In heaven now proclaimed 
And I know up in heaven, you're not supposed to cry. But I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes. As Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord, and he said, my child, look around for grace is your reward thank you for giving to the lord i am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so I am so glad you gave I am so glad you gave I want to thank the Lord this morning for Romans 8, 26. Um, burdened as we are right now. Um, you know, I know the Spirit makes groan and intercession for us when we don't know how to pray, and I just, I'm thankful for that because I know the Lord's will will be done. Did he? 
Look with me in the book of Genesis. Genesis, chapter number 22. The other side of the mountain, or both sides of the mountain. What did you say, brother? Well, let's just use this. I'll try to stay rooted and grounded this morning so you can record it. Amen. Amen. In Genesis chapter number 22. If you find in your place. Now, don't forget the service tonight. You be in your place tonight, if at all possible. Brother David Cassidy and uh, the girls' home will be with us tonight. And we're looking for a good time. There's supposed to be about 20 of them supposed to be with us. And they'll be singing. And Brother Cassidy will be preaching for us tonight. And I'm looking forward to that. And we're just going to have a great time in the Lord. And then right after the service tonight, we've we got all those kids that will be with us tonight. So we're going to do something special. We're going to have, uh, we need two or three people that will bring me a good cold gallon of milk. I mean real milk. Amen. Now that old two percent junk, you know, you know, real milk. Amen. I, I never have understood that. I mean, you know, just buy a gallon of real good milk and get you an empty milk container and fill it half full of water and make you two gallons for the price of one. That's right. Amen. But we're gonna have fresh, delicious, crispy cream donuts tonight. Amen. Say amen, Miss Inez. Glory to God. Fresh Krispy Kreme donuts and cold milk and coffee and uh, Cokes and stuff. We'll just have a good time of fellowship right after the service tonight. And uh, you make plans to be here tonight. Amen. And uh, if you got your Bible open now, Genesis 22. Genesis chapter 22. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said my father and he said here am I my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram, tall in a thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. 
or the God that provides. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And we'll leave off reading right there. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on the word of God. Our Father, as we come, we thank you for the good word. We thank you, Father, for the blessings. We thank you for the sacrifice of Calvary. We thank you for every drop of blood that you gave that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you, Father, for the good songs of Zion, the good patriotic spirit that we've also failed here today. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for our nation. We thank you for our veterans. We thank you for those that are currently serving our country now. And we thank you for everyone that laid their life down that we can have freedom. But most of all, we thank you for your darling son that laid his life down that we might have spiritual freedom. Oh, Lord God, we thank you today, Lord, for your good word. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless and get help your servant. As feeble as I am, I pray that you'll bless the message and use me for your glory today. Be with those that are traveling. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are in need today, God. Those that are, are suffering today. You know every heart, every need. Lord, we commit it all to thee now. Just bless, Lord, save that sinner nearest hell. Reclaim that backslider. Get glory in everything that's done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to preach a little while on both sides of the mountain. Here in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham, uh, the Bible says that Abraham was a man just as we are, of like passion as we are. He had feelings like you, you have feelings. And uh, he loved his son as you love your children. And uh, Abraham was asked to do a great thing. Abraham is called the friend of God. Abraham had a close relationship with God. Abraham walked in sweet fellowship with God. And here God comes and he speaks to Abraham. God, God had given him this promised son after waiting many, many years and trusting God and believing God that God was going to give him this son. And the word of God tells us now that he has Isaac. Uh, man, Isaac is his pride and joy. His hopes and his dreams and his life is bound up in Isaac. And now God comes and he tells Abraham, Take thy son, thy only son Isaac. Take him and take him to the place where I'll show you, Abraham. And I want you to offer him up there as a burnt sacrifice, as an offering unto me. I want you to give him to me as a sacrifice, Abraham. Now, I don't understand. I do not know what may have went through the heart and mind of Abraham. I don't know what he thought. What does God uh, what in the world is God going to achieve or accomplish out of this? Why would God ask me to do this thing? Why would God want me to do such a thing as this? But the Bible says that God did. Now Abraham could only see as he looked at that mountain as they started uh, up that mountain. Abraham could only see one side of that mountain. But thank God I'm glad that God our sovereign God could see both sides of the mountain. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's Abraham and Isaac as they start up and they're going up one side of the mountain. Praise God. God had a ram that was coming up on the other side of the mountain. Thank God. And I'm glad that he did. Amen. Praise God. Abraham couldn't see that, but God could see that. Abraham didn't understand what God was doing and what God's, God's plan was. A friend of mine, Brother Tom Hayes, wrote a book many years ago. God doesn't want your Isaacs. He just wants more of you. And certainly that's the truth. He just wanted more of Abraham. He just wanted Abraham to get to that place where he really understood just how much God did love him. And how far God was willing to go for him. And what God was going to do. Amen. Praise God. I believe that he just wanted Abraham to understand. Just how much that he loved him. How much that he loves mankind. How much that he loves old sinners. And how much he's willing to give to keep us out of a fiery hell. Thank God. I'm telling you. Praise God. God. God done a great work there in the life of Abraham. Now I'm sure as Abraham's going up that mountain. Old Satan's trying 
trying to speak to him and saying, now, why would God ask you to do such a thing? Why, this is ridiculous. Uh, there, there's, how in the world could God get glory out of this? Uh, and, uh, he probably thought this is the most selfish thing that God has ever done. How could God ask you, Abraham, to do such a thing as he's asked you to do? But Abraham just kept right on walking. He just kept right on moving. He just kept right on going forward. He never questioned God on it. He just got up and he didn't say, uh, I, I don't understand, God, why you want this. God, you explain a little more. God, you go a little further. You're going to have to give me a better explanation than just get up and take my son up. That's not what he's done. No, sir. He didn't begin to complain and gripe and question God. He just done what God said. Now, that took a great man, a man of great faith, a, a, a man of great passion for God to be able to do that. Now, as I said, he loved that boy. Uh, his, he loved that boy better than life itself. And he was willing to do that. I don't know that I could do that. Uh, I don't know that you could do that. Much as I love my girls, I, I, I cannot imagine taking and uh, doing such a thing as that. But yet Abraham believed God. And uh, Abraham was willing to do what God said. Uh, the Bible says that Abraham, there he was strengthening. Uh, oh, I mean, God was strengthening Abraham's faith. When this thing is said and done, when it's all over, I'll guarantee you, Abraham, even though he was a man of great faith as it was, when it was all said and done, Abraham's faith was even greater. And uh, Abraham had, had more patience. The Bible says the trial of your faith worketh patience in your life. Now, I, I think about this. God tested Abraham's faith, praise God, because God trusted Abraham's obedience. The same thing was true in the life of Job. God could test Job's faith because God knew what Job was. And God knew how that Job was going to come through the same way. He knew what Abraham was made of. He knew the kind of faith Abraham had. He knew the love that Abraham had for him. He knew Abraham's heart and passion for him. And he knows yours. And he knows mine. He knows our frame, the Bible says. He knows everything about us. Praise God. And the good news is he loves us in spite of it. Amen. Amen. He knows how far you're willing to go for him. Uh, have you asked yourself lately, how far would I really go for God? What would I really do for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ? If God asked me to do some great thing, some spectacular thing, something that was really going to cost me something in my life, would I be willing to give it to God? Would I be willing to go that second mile, that third mile, that fourth mile for the glory of God? Would I be willing to lay down all these temporal things, praise God, to achieve some eternal thing for the glory of God? Would you? Would I? Praise God. The Word of God tells us that Abraham, he was put to the test and he passed. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I thank God, God. God broke Abraham's heart. Now, Abraham was hurting when he was walking up that mountain. Man, his heart was breaking on the inside. I wasn't there. I, I don't see what was happening. I think maybe Isaac may have turned from time to time and looked at his father. Maybe he saw some tears running down his father's cheek. Maybe he just saw anguish on his face. And uh, maybe as they're going on up through there and and uh, Isaac begins to look around and he don't understand what's taking place, what's happening. And uh, he sees the distress maybe that his father's in. And he gets to thinking, well, what are we going to sacrifice? And he gets to looking around and he says, Father, here's the wood. And, and here's the fire. But, but where's, where's, the, where's the lamb? Where's the, where's the sacrifice? Where's the offering? And Abraham says, Son, God will provide himself a lamb. Yes, Amen. Amen. He'll supply, supply himself a sacrifice. Oh, oh, Isaac said, Father, where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? Hallelujah. Old John the Baptist steps out on the river Jordan. Praise God. And he says, Behold. That question is answered almost 2,000 years later. He says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Praise God.
Yes, God did provide himself a lamb. God did su uh, supply the sacrifice for the sins of the world. For God hath made himself to become sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It should have been us. It should have been us dying upon that old cross. But thank God, hallelujah, he could see the other side of the mountain. Praise God. It should have been us dying in our sins and going to hell. But he gave his son to hang on a cruel cross and shed his blood and to be our substitute and take our place. That doesn't leave any room for any work salvation. That doesn't leave any, any, any uh, room for our merits or trying to win the favor of God or uh, trying to win heaven. I'm telling you, God gave heaven's best for this world's worst to keep us out of hell. Amen. Thank God. Yeah. Amen. God broke Abraham's heart that day. He felt like he was going to die, no doubt, when he walked, walked up that mountain. But I believe deep in the heart of Abraham, Abraham just believed God. And I, I believe his heart and his mind went back to a time when he fellowship with God and God spoke to Abraham and told him to look up to heaven. Man, it was a night when all the stars was glistening. Praise God, and Abraham walked out on the plain of memory and he looked up into the heaven and Abraham said, God said, Abraham, you just look at the stars. He said, now Abraham, if you can number all the stars, he said, that's the way your seed's gonna be. He says, I'm going to multiply your children. I'm going to multiply your seed like the stars of heaven and like the sand that's on the seashore. Praise God. And I just wonder if while Abraham's walking up that mountain, praise God, his son's got that wood laying on his back and he's got that knife in his hand and he's got that fire to offer his son up as a burnt sacrifice. He's just, he just hearing those words of God and he's trusting the promises of God. And God said that he was going to do it through his son Isaac. Praise God. And I know Abraham, he thought, I don't understand how God's going to do it. I don't understand just what God's got in plan, but I believe God's going to do what he said. I believe God's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. Amen. You say, what do you think? I believe God. I believe Abraham believed that if he sacrificed that boy on that mountain, that God was going to raise him up from the dead. Amen. You say, you got scripture for that? I wouldn't say it if I didn't. Amen. Look over the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11 and verse number 17. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 17 down through verse 19. Listen to this. The Bible says this is a great hall of fame, by the way. Hebrews chapter 11. It's the great, hey, hey, it's the great hall of fame of faith. Praise God. It, it took something to get your name in God's Hall of Fame. Well, I'll tell you what. It, hey, the Hall of Fame here, it takes something to, to get, your, get your footprint, get your name. Right? But here, God's great Hall of Fame. In verse number 17, it says, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is, was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, look, in, look at verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Woo, glory to God. Praise God. He just believed that God was God. He just believed that God was able. And he believed that God was going to keep all of his promises. I don't know a whole lot of things today. Praise God. But I know one thing. I know that my God is going to keep all his promises. Now I may not keep all mine. And you may not keep all yours. And I may disappoint you. And you may disappoint me. But I will promise you God is going to do what he said that he was going to do. Amen. Praise God. God said, hallelujah, that he was going to raise up his son from the dead. And he did. Jesus said, I've got power to lay my life down and I've got power to take it up again. And he got up victorious over death and hell and the grave. And Jesus told old Martha standing there at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Praise God. And I believe that. Hallelujah. You might take this old carcass and you might plant it out there six foot 
foot under the sod of the earth. But one of these days, the trumpet is going to sound, and I'm going to get up, praise God, victorious in a new glorified body. Woo! Why? Hey, how can you have confidence in that? How can you really believe all that? Because he who cannot lie has promised. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says that he's magnified his word above his name. Praise God. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle from the word of God shall pass till all be fulfilled. Praise God. There's nothing the devil or nobody else could do to keep me in that grave or you either. Woo! Abraham believed. He believed God. Amen. Well, I, I see now there is Abraham and Isaac. He's going up that side of the mountain. Praise God. He gets to that place. God's got that ram coming up the other side of the mountain. Man, he, he, he goes right up, right up to the last minute. God lets him go just as far as he can go. I mean, testing the faith of his servant Abraham. And remember, a faith that cannot be tested, cannot be trusted. Right? right. right? And he, his, he, he binds his son. I don't think Isaac thought of it. Isaac thought, what in the world are you doing, Father? I'm sure it went through his mind. But I believe Isaac just humbled himself right into the hands of Abraham. Here's Isaac's a young man. Abraham's an older man. Well, he could have probably tried to overpower him, but he didn't. He just humbled himself in the hands of his father. I believe Isaac was looking at Abraham, maybe with some tears running down his cheek and said, not my will, Father, but thy will be done. It's whatever you want. And I believe, I believe he just let his father bind him, stretch him across that altar there, Boy, he draws back that knife and he's getting ready to plunge it into the heart of his son. And the angel of God stayed the hand of Abraham and said, Do your son no harm. Do your son no harm. Amen. Praise God. About that time Abraham looked, there was that old ram caught over there in the thicket. Amen. Praise God. God had provided a lamb. He had provided a, a ram there for, for Isaac. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, now I know, praise God, you're willing to give your all, Abraham. Yes. Boy, I, don't you know there's camp meeting on the mountain. Yes. Don't you know, praise God, when they started sacrificing that ram, the Bible says they took that ram and they offered him up in the place of Isaac. Glory to God. Don't you know as they sat around there, don't you know they said, Woo! glory to God. Don't you know, praise God, both of them was crying and shouting and praising God. And I'm sure, I'm sure Abraham probably looked at Isaac that day and he said, Son, you know, God just wanted me to know how he's going to feel one day when he sends his son. I don't know just what the conversation was. Uh, hey, God just wanted him to know, just wanted him to know how he is going to feel. On that day, Paige, you come get ready to sing with me. Uh, you get my, that number two ready on, on that soundtrack up there. Praise God. God wanted Abraham to understand. I, I, I just want you to know how I'm going to feel one day. I just, I, know, I just want you to understand how my heart's going to break. Abraham was called the friend of God. I don't find nobody else in the Bible that was called the friend of God. But Abraham was. Find that red book. Abraham was. Praise God. He said, I just want you to know, Abraham, one of these days I'm going to send my son and I'm going to feel the same pain that you felt. Let me, let me uh, ask you this morning, how far would you go for God? We know how far he went for us. Do you really understand? Do you really understand what God done for you? Uh, you know, but before I got saved, I, I never really understood what God had done for me. The price that God had paid for me to have eternal life. God said to Abraham, I just, want, just wanted you to know. God 
up the mountains And there make him a sacrifice to me I know tears rolled down and breath was hard to come by While Abraham was knelt there on his knees So hand in hand they headed up the mountain And he thought about the things that lay in store Like shattered glass inside his heart was breaking Cause he'd never known a pain like this before Too soon they reached that spot where they were going And he laid Isaac down on his deathbed His heart raced as he drew the knife to strike him but a God of mercy stopped him and he said, I just wanted you to know exactly how it feels to watch a son you love walk up a lonely hill to feel the pain inside as your heart breaks in your chest to lose the very thing that you love the best. So now you walk the walk, and I know you understand the price that must be paid to correct the sins of man. You'll know just how I feel when they walk him up that hill. I just wanted you to know exactly how it feels to watch a son you love. Walk up the lonely hill To feel the pain inside As your heart breaks in your chest To lose the very thing That you love the best So now you are the one And I know you understand The price that must be paid To correct the sins of man I just wanted you to know exactly how it feels when they walk him up that hill. I just wanted you to know. stand if you need to see anyone after the service if you're here and you'd like to receive Christ as your Savior if you, you say I've never identified with that, that lamb but I sure want him to be my substitute we're here for you we'll be here for you we'll go to the prayer room with you we'll pray with you you just see me after the service or one of these deacons or one of these men they'll be glad to pray with you one of these ladies if you're a lady here these ladies will take you to the prayer room God bless you. Let's be dismissed. Don't forget the service tonight. You don't want to miss the service tonight.